Hello everyone, I'm Cynical Tilt, and I've been getting a lot of people on my stream asking me, how do you do tabletop? Like, how do you play D&D on tabletop? It seems very intimidating, very daunting. And it really isn't. It's like maybe four different steps. But first off, you have to own tabletop. So you just go to Steam and you purchase it. I like if you're a DM and you're looking to get your players in and they're like, oh, twenty dollars is kind of a lot just to play D and D. Inform them that they have either this choice, so they could either get this or they could get roll twenty or there's another one um, on Steam that's even that's just as expensive as roll twenty because you have to buy a bunch of the handbooks and everything. Like this is definitely by far the cheapest and allows you for three D like choices with models. So. I recommend this, especially to people who are starting off and don't want to spend a lot of money, but they also want to play D&D online with a group of friends or someone. This is probably the best way to do it. Now, if you're a DM and trying to get people in, you can buy the you can buy the four pack for sixty dollars, or you can get the uh, single like the single purchase for twenty. Either one works. Neither one of them is like better than the other. It's literally just like, do you want a four pack or do you not want a four pack? So after you get that. What you're going to do is you want to open up uh, the Steam Workshop. I'll just open mine up and bring it over. And there's a few like things from the workshop you want to grab. So I have a bunch more, but just ignore most of these. The, the ones you want, the ones that are crucial, is you want D and D five E miniatures. This thing is insane. Somebody took the like the trouble of putting almost every single monster and a lot of other player character models into this one pack. Where you can just grab from it and i'll show you later when i open up when i get tabletop you can grab from it you can grab any monsters you need anything you can create multiple ones of them it's fantastic it saves so much trouble and it really without this you wouldn't be able to do it on tabletop so shout out to whoever made this i don't remember the name of it right now but it's been around for a very long time whoever made this they're a god the next thing you need is well, the Kraken table is also something I would I'd recommend because I really enjoy the table, but it's not necessary. But you would need this perfect D and D or Pathfinder board. This board, or this table comes with a bunch of things. You can make you can mostly get rid of a lot of like because when it spawns in, it's going to spawn in like you can probably see it in the little in the in the photo here. I'll just open it up. But when it spawns in, it's going to sp like spawn in these character sheets. You really wouldn't need these unless you really just want to use them. But it, I wouldn't recommend it. They're kind of finicky. Not really the best. Really the main reason you want to use this is for the board. Because you get a good look at it. For one, it has a bunch of the rules. That's all the rules that a DM would ever need to know. It's got a really nice large board for everyone to roll from. Everyone has their own little dice roller. It's fantastic. You can get rid of some of this stuff if you feel like it's lagging you out or slowing you down. Because tabletop is a very CPU heavy game. Where you feel like you're kind of like having to like taking forever for it to load or a lot of things aren't necessary. Just delete them. It's not that not that big of a deal. If you don't need it, you don't need it. Comes a dice board for each one. And when I get into mine, you're going to see mine is very different from how a lot of the other ones are. And that's purely just because I've tweaked mine over the years. I've been doing this for a while now. And I mine just looks different. I can I can do a later video if you guys are interested on like how I built mine specifically. But besides that, like we're fine. All right. So once you got the Pathfinder board, we'll go back. That's really all you need. Like I'm like, like no joke. You just need those two mods. Like I've got a bunch more here. Like the D and D five E potions this is like almost every potion in the game, and it comes with a text tells you like what they do, so you can keep it on you. I have I use this one. There is the robot models, which is just models that of robots that I found because I couldn't find any models in the miniature box, which is like really confusing to me what they didn't do these but it's the models from um uh micronoid and gyroid and those other ones from primus or primus that that whole world in the D, &D world i got some gun and figures i use the kraken table is what i use that's why my table is going to look different than this table but they're besides that they're perfectly fine both tables work just as well but you'll see why i use kraken when i get into it so let's go ahead and actually do that so let me move this out of the way let me make sure yeah so that's everything you need to worry about so here's my table so the big the big difference is you're going to notice is the mine's a lot like less things and i do that on purpose I, I don't like having let's close this i don't like having a lot of things that slows down the progress and it also just kind of like catches the eye of the player too much they end up playing with things they don't need to be playing with it's kind of like i like simple i'm more i'm very much a simple person so this table is great 
for multiple reasons. This thing gives me everything I could ever ask for. For one, I get all of these magic. This is literally every spell in the game. Like it includes all of them from like every of the books and everything. So if you ever need to like, so you say your player uses a spell and you don't know exactly what it does. You just go here, right click it, search. And like, oh, well, he's using fireball. I don't know what fireball does. Type it in, drag it out, and boom, you've got it. Fireball. Now I know what it does. I don't have to worry about it. And I'm 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 clicking Alt while hovered over this. Get rid of that. I'm clicking Alt while hovered over this to see it. But you'll get all the tutorial. Tabletop is a really decent tutorial. It tells you how to do all this, so you don't. Have, I'm not really gonna go into details of how I'm like what buttons I'm pressing or anything like that because tabletop does it for me. When you buy the game, it gives a tutorial. It's got a calculator. You ever need to calculate damage? Um. I've got little, little markers for if they're poisoned or prone or anything of that sort. You've got dice bags with unlimited like 20s. You can, you're can you never going to run out of like dice. And then these are all the minions I got from the other mod that I was talking about, the manager mod. You see, they're all like none of them are actually color textured. Like I've got some here that I found from other things that I use. But most of these are just like this. They're like a single color. And you can change the color if you wanted. You just go to color tint, apply, and now he's red. Like it doesn't really have, you can change what color you want, but you see they're really well done for what they are. And this is just actually, like some of these you'll see aren't specific creatures. They're just um, models of like, say what a character would want to look like. And then you have the creatures, which is like a beholder or a gold dragon, you got an orc berserker, uh, a gift pirate, dwarf mushroom druid. I don't know why they decided that we needed to have one of those, but thank God, because I like it. Um, and then this is some notes I wrote down for kit for uh, rarities of items so I could have it on hand And there's a bunch of rule notes here For equipment and all that and Then this thing now this thing I use to keep track of like monster health. You can literally put whatever number you want there and I pair it with this Monster manual and like I said, like, oh, what, what monsters do I want to use? Uh, let's try vampires. I just used vampires in the last game I did with my players. And there I go. I got the vampire card. Uh, crap. I got the wrong one. Some of them have, like, multiple cards that go with them. And vampire has a lot on the card sheet. So there's more than just one thing. So there we go. You just come over here and just place it down. And there you go. So now I've got vampire. Okay, it's 144 health. I just put it here. And boom. And then you say, oh, but where's the miniature? Oh, what I would do then is I'd go to games, the workshop, D&D 5e miniatures. You don't open it, you expand it. Because if, like, if you ever open that mod, you will sit there for 30 minutes waiting for all of it to load in. You can do that. I've done it before when I want, just because I wanted to look. And if you, and it's a definitely a fun experience to so just go in there and just play around and see all the miniatures just like there. But in a like a, in a real time situation you don't want to do that so there's a lot here you see it's going to like it's going to lag me down a bit it's going to slow me down because there's so many but i need a vampire i come up here to search see it's saying loading now because I, I i scrolled down too much <laughs> search type in vampire boom. and i probably want to grab a spawn or two and there we go i've got the vampire and then i can change what color it is i can change the name of it by right clicking and just changing its name but i have a vampire model now I'm ready to uh, use it. Now the next question would probably be, oh, hold on. Before we go any further, this is the potion mod I was talking about for our workshop. From workshop. The thing that has it, and you hover over it for a second, and there, drink this potion, you gain resistance to radiant damage for one hour. And this is every one of the healing potions, and a potion of poison, all that. So, that's great. Now, the next question would be, where are the boards? Because you need boards. Well, that's already taken care of also with the, um, this one, with the perfect D&D and Pathfinder board. There's bags on this board, which I have brought over now to my new board, that carry in all the maps. So you just search, give it a moment, there's a lot of maps in there. <laughs> there it goes. So there's going to be some maps in here that I made myself, and I can do another video on that if, if anyone's interested. Um, like just comment below if you're interested in me, in me showing you how I brought in my own maps or maps from other things. Like I brought in maps from Waterdeep. I might actually load one of those in last. I brought in maps from the Waterdeep, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, Dun Waterdeep, and the Dragon Heist. 
um, Tomb of, Anni Tomb of Annihilation. I've brought in maps from pretty much everything, but there's a lot of maps already in here if you don't want to do that. There, here's one right here I actually I brought in. So you would literally just you go to it, like let's do Cobalt Warren, and you just drag it out, and here it is. And if it's too small for you or too big, and you can, you can always just kind of toggle, go to over here, scale, and you can scale it up. Now I recommend once it gets too big, it's going to start like colliding with things. So what I recommend doing is if you do that, if you want to make it bigger than the actual like thing, you just kind of position it in a good way. You would lock it first, and then scale it. And there, see, it's going to go into it, but since it's locked, it's fine. As long as you never unlock it, you're good. Uh, these things are really cool actually these are dice rollers so like i have a player who like really likes using them so i put one basically right in front of them you just get the die and you drop it in and it rolls them for you and it's, it's just a really neat trick you don't really have to do that but he likes them it comes with this board by the way um but yeah if you're wondering where the players sit they sit here i don't have any dice on this one because i don't have that many players i only have three at the moment i've got dice over here i think no here yeah, dice here. Because I had four players, one of them had to drop out. And I just keep, this is the shit die for when, for, I, for when I make them roll random encounters to see if they get one. And this is a corn cob die, it's just a joke from the game. But uh, yeah, and you just put the bags here, you color cord them. It's really simple. And you're ready. So you go in as a DM. You pick out the map you want, you put it down. You put the monsters, you pick, you get the monsters you need for this for the encounter. And you put your players in there. And you can take your players in there if you really want to. I kind of know how I did it. Was you take your players to D&D &D 5e managers. Like you actually open this up. Which I'm not going to do because I'd be sitting here. And like it'd be, it would turn a, like a short minute video into a very long like 40 minute video. Of me sitting here having to load. You would then just open this up. And you'd have your players like pick from the assortment of player managers that this thing has. Which is a lot. Has a ton. Or if you really wanted to you could just say like oh my player is playing a human. Just type in human, and all the type of human models will come up. Here's one female druid, a human a human cleric, human ranger. You get the point. The bunch of saga about my keyboard. And that's about it. I'm trying to remember if I'm like forgetting anything. I don't think I am. Like I said, my board is far more simplistic, and I can go over a tutorial of how I did the other board. I'm going to go ahead and load up the other board, actually. Since I'm here, we'll load up. There's the other one. Dungeon Dragons 5e game session setup. You want this one as well. I don't know why it didn't show up in my um my thing. I know I was looking for it, but I didn't see it. Let me see. Did I just like go past it or is there just it's just not showing up anymore? I guess I might have deleted it a while back or not or whatnot, but this is the name of it, and you'll find this on the workshop. Dungeons and Dragons D D 5e game session setup. And this one comes with this with uh, all the other stuff that you're seeing because if you ever see something if you open up in basic sense if you ever if you ever go and you open up this one the perfect D, &D or Pathfinder, and you, do, you see something that's on my board that wasn't that's not on yours it's probably on this one as well and then if you see something like if you see something about my table that's not about this table or this table it's because i'm using the kraken table that's the basic sense of that so with this, also there's going to be chairs in this one. I deleted the chairs. I didn't like them. <laughs> but besides that, yeah. So after all that, let's go ahead and I'll load up one of my um, saved files. Let's go into... Let's go with this one. This is kind of a big thing that I'll show you, get a good idea. So this will tell you how long it takes to load. I have a decade old hard drive. So mine takes incredibly much longer than anyone else's would. If you have a newer-ish hard drive than 10 years, yours will be, or you SSD. if you have an SSD, it's going to load so much faster. Like you hear things coming in from the noise in the background. It will eventually work, I promise you. <laughs> Here you go. This is all the work. I did, this all, I did all this ahead of time. I went ahead and already put the monsters down. Here's some, like, pirates and bandits. Um... Here's a bunch of uh, orcs, bugbears, my bad. I thought they were orcs. A bunch of bugbears, there's a gelatinous cube. A bunch of like sturges and an onkeg. Come up here, you got some like manacores. 
And this map is from the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. I just stripped it right out, I copied it, and I pasted it onto a, like one of these boards. The, these boards usually show up white, you just like type in. I'll show you another video if you're interested. But basic sense, you can just copy and paste them onto here. And then make the board as big as you want. And then put everything else you want in it. And here's where my players would start. Now if you're wondering how I did these, uh, like these boxes, I did them like this because if the player, like see, say the, I, uh, the white player, um this is what they see they can't see inside these boxes oh uh, except for this one because i made it like that this is where they would start and i would gradually make it where they can see inside each box as they progress so that i can kind of keep that feeling of like secrecy the same way you would get from like roll 20 or any of the other ways of playing DD online and it just makes it so much simple and these are really easy to make go back to game master color you would just come over here to zone and you get this little marker. Be careful not to click already pre-made zones with the marker, because if you let click, if you left click them, they go away, like so. See, but you would come over and then you kind of get get the right angle, and you just draw the box, and it's that simple. Then you right click it. You see, right, in its normal standard, you would go back to it, and the monster would be gone because that's how it works. You can see the board, but you can't see the monster. I typically go a step further and I right click the zone and I make it uh, I click off see through so now no longer is it's no longer see through you see it's hidden completely but that's it that's the basics oh uh, encounter list so this is so we can keep track of who's going who in initiative this is just an initiative tra tracker basically is what this is so you keep track of what round it is, new round, you move it down, next player's turn, next player's turn. Now in the new in a newer model I have of this, I actually have my own board back here. This is just a this is just taste. You can do it however you want. You can put the monsters up here too. But I have a new I have a board back here to, for the monsters specifically, so that they don't know when the monsters are rolling. But what turn the monsters are going. But you just you drag them from this thing, and you right click it. And state one is player, state two is enemy, state three is ally, and I think state four is neutral. Yep. And whatever they are, you put them there. And it's simple. It's super simple. But I think that's it. Oh, and yes, these dice rollers do work. They work for everything except for a d4. See? Boom. Roll a two. That's garbage. But if I pick up a d4, you'll see... D4s do not work. <laughs> I have tried. I tried dropping it like a bit further in. Nope. So D4s don't work. And like I said, the tutorial would tell you how to roll them. It's not that hard. You can roll them any other way you want. I just like the dice roller because like it usually just sits there and no one ever uses it. But I keep it there on the off chance someone wants to use it. I've got these dice trays. These are, this is usually where I roll at. My players tend to... They tend to roll right here in their own board, or they end up rolling on the sides, or they're using this thing because it's a neat little trick. They don't typically roll in the, and like I, they, I used to give them all a dice tray, and they never used it, so I just deleted them all. It was just a waste of space. And I have a D100 for the percentage dies, and a little compass, but that, that, that's just there again for looks. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I know this is a good way of showing you like I have I already have every card out for what is inside this dungeon so no matter where they go what happens I'm already ready to see like what I need if I need more of a certain creature I already have it here go ahead and show you how to do that it's really simple like oh they like I need more sturges in this room which I clearly don't but I need more sturges in this room you go to copy and you'd go to to the board actually you can't do it on top of these boards you have to actually do it on the board like the actual one and you just paste you see if i right click the board actually it's like it's right clicking the board itself and it won't let me paste here so you have to click off of it and just paste and you just paste however many you want in and that's as simple as this this is actually really simple and super cheap so it's a 60 dollar for four pack entry fee when you're done or it's a twenty dollar for four pack. Now I know what you're thinking. What about how do I do with character sheets and how do I deal with my characters? So how you would do with that, my dear friend? Quite simple. That's not what I want. I guess we'll use this one. I don't know where I did with the other one. <laughs> Get rid of that. 
how I would deal with that is a, uh, you would go to D&D Beyond. And D&D Beyond is a fantastic website. If you've seen Critical Role, I'm not going to go through the ad. You know what D&D Beyond is. But you would go to campaigns. You'd make a campaign. And then you would have a link right here. And you would tell your players to make a character on D&D Beyond and use the link. Now, there are certain things that are tied behind having to buy packs or anything like that. Like if you, if you want to buy the books, it's fine. I personally don't. How I would do it is I would just buy the books yourself. The same way you have to do it on Roll20 or any of the other ones. And then I would just have the subscription so like all my players can use my books. So they don't have to spend a dime, but I do. But uh, how, how we do it, like how I would, that's how I would do it if I could do it. But I can't do it that way, sadly, because I'm not made of money. But they all, we all kind of just bought the books that we wanted, that we needed. And everyone kind of works. And so you can come here and use you. And so you can see each player's character sheet. From everything about it you can even go in and change things like i want him to have this equipped boom and now it's equipped i have full control over his character same way he does which is great so i can keep track of things he doesn't want each oh yeah that's right <laughs> i was like wait, wait did he die um but that's that's the basic sense of it that's pretty much everything you need to know I can do like in detail videos on other things if you want me to. Just comment below. I'll look into it. I'll, I'll set up a video and I'll do it. But I wanted to just get this out here because so many people keep asking me. I just want to be able to send them a link to this video if they ever keep like people keep asking me while I'm DMing on Twitch. Um, oh, how do you do this? I always thought it was so intimidating. Or oh, that looks like a lot of work. Or blah 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 blah. Or this and that. So I'm like, no, it's not that much work. It really didn't take that long as long as it would on anything else and i like i like tabletop personally because of 3d models i feel and because my players are actually rolling the dice but it's teach their own roll 20 is fine i think the other ones is fine what is the name of that other one i keep speaking of uh, fantasy grounds fantasy grounds is fine i have a friend he dms on fantasy grounds that's why i have the demo and like when we play with him or when he DMs, we use Fantasy Ground. But when I DM, we use Tabletop. It's really just a, just a preference, really. There's not a big enough deal difference between any of them. I think if you're broke, which the majority of us all are, we just disagree to it, we're all broke. If you're broke, this is the best bet. I think it's a cheaper entryway. But if you're not broke, I mean, Roll20 and Fantasy Ground does it just well. They do it just as well. Honestly, I, I prefer Fantasy Grounds over World 20, but again, that's preference. Um, think of anything else? No, that's it. So, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below in the comment. Um, a link to my Twitch will be in the description if you ever want to come by and say hi. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Pretty much, I don't have a time for when I stream. I just stream Monday. I know I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Twitch. Uh, sometimes I stream D&D, sometimes I'm playing other games. If you want to come meet me on Twitch, ask me any questions there, I'll be free to answer. Thanks for watching my video. Hope this helped.